It says in verse 12, Then understood they how that he bade them not beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. And we get the extra interpretation here that the leaven he was referring to of the Pharisees and Sadducees is their doctrine. That's what he was talking about when he said the leaven of the Pharisees and Sadducees. It's their doctrine. It's their teaching. Is that, and, and the whole point is that the Pharisees and Sadducees, you know, they're these false prophets and they're teaching false doctrine. And what happens with this false doctrine is that it starts to corrupt and infect other doctrines. Because what leaven does, you add a little bit of leaven to the bread, but the, the leaven gets mixed in and intermingled with all of the bread, right? It creeps into everything. And that is the way that bad doctrine works. Because if you think about it, when you study the Word of God, when you come up with doctrines, in order to be true doctrines from God's Word, they can't be contradictory to other doctrines. You can't have one thing in one place saying one thing and then another thing saying something that contradicts, is contrary to the other, right? Otherwise, it's bad doctrine. So in order to try to make everything fit together, you have to come up with these different doctrines to try to make it all merge. And when you have bad doctrine, in order to try to make that doctrine fit into the big picture of God's word, you have to start, oh, we got to move this over this way, we got to move this over that way, and you start tampering with and corrupting other doctrines until it just spreads and, the, and all of your doctrines is bad. Uh, a real easy way to understand this, I think most of you here are probably pretty well versed when it comes to end time stuff. We preached about it a bunch here. There's a lot of, a lot of stuff you've probably followed. Um, but when it comes to something that in and of itself isn't the most important doctrine, right? The, the timing of the, tri of the rapture and, and the, the timeline of events for the tribulation. But it's a good example of, of how it's not just one doctrine that's impacted. It's multiple things. So the people who believe in a pre-tribulational rapture, so the rapture that takes place before any tribulation, before anything else happens, they have to be able to deal with scriptures like Matthew 24 that very, very clearly say after the tribulation of those days, the sun and moon shall be darkened, and, and, and it talks about the angels gathering together the elect, right? So they say, aha, see, elect. Elect is not believers. So that's how they try to make their, their doctrine of, well, the pre-tribulation is true, pre-tribulation rapture is true, and, and what Matthew 24 is talking about, see, that's talking about different people. That's talking about Jews. Jews are elect, not believers. And then it gets into this Zionism doctrine that the Jews are God's chosen people, and that's why they're elect, and, and you go off on this whole other area and then in addition to that, you need like some form of dispensationalism too. Because as you start looking at these various passages that all talk about the timing of the rapture and things like that, you have to be able to explain it away somehow. So it leads you down these other paths that start in infecting other doctrines because you have to try to make it all fit. And, and this is what Jesus is warning to beware of, and it's like leaven. Bad doctrine is just like leaven. And that's why we need to be careful, especially not just with doctrines like the rapture, because while in and of itself it isn't the most, like I said, it's not the most important doctrine. It's an important doctrine. It's not the most important one. It's not something we're going to you know, break fellowship over. But even with the doctrines that aren't as important, you still need to be careful because it's going to start impacting other doctrines in other areas and in, in other, th the other ways that you view the Bible and you view God and, and the doctrines that you, you, you hold to because you're trying to make everything fit together when you've got some leaven in there. And the leaven starts to impact other things.